What's going on, guys? Brian's here. Today's Wednesday, December 27th, 2023. The market is currently open. I figured I'd hop back on and record another live session, which is a follow up to the video that was recorded yesterday, which is piggybacking off of the video I did pertaining to these gamma exposure levels that I plotted out at the start of the week. If you're new to the YouTube channel, then I've been recording these videos and putting them out at the start of the week, showcasing how I analyze the gamma exposure levels and how I plot these levels on my charts. And then I decided for this week here, I've been able to record these live sessions showcasing some of the positions that I am actually opening so that way you guys can get an idea of how you can use these levels to your advantage. On top of that it is a very low volatile period in the market right now. I am a filmmaker outside of trading and nothing I'm working on is currently in production so it's freeing up a little bit extra time to allow me to actually hop on and record these videos. It's not something that I'll be able to upkeep into next year. So moving right along, we started yesterday with the zero DTE iron condor. Obviously that trade is not currently open because it's no longer zero DTE. If we take a look at my live PL right now, it's been hovering between 1,000 to 1,200 bucks. As you guys can see, I just unchecked any position that I don't have open that's pertaining to uh, just the this week's expirations because I wanted to keep this video focused on just the positions that were open yesterday that I showcased. I have all groups turned on normally before I record a video if I'm talking about just zero DTE, I will categorize them in a zero DTE folder. But again, I'm not trading with any large size here. This is just $7,000 in buying power that I'm using, which is a fraction of the size I would normally trade with, which makes it pretty easy to record these videos because it's low pressure, low volatile. I'm not too concerned, not too worried right now about how things are going. And we'll just break it right down. So we know yesterday, I discussed that zero DT iron condor. If we were to just take a look at how that ended up turning out, so we can see yesterday, this is what happened. The market ended up, you know, it was above the today anchored VWAP. We hovered around here. This is around the time when I recorded that video showcasing how things are going. And then we can see we ended up rallying straight into a uh, power hour, right into this level that's referred to as the quant trading app intraday level. I've done a lot of videos showcasing the quant trading app levels. I'm focusing a little bit more on some of the other levels because those of you that have seen any of the other videos, quant trading app has still been working exactly the same way. So we have a little bit of rejection here. These levels are plotted pre-market from the quant trading app script, so I don't have to draw any of these levels in manually. I do the gamma exposure levels manually because it's a great process to do. It's a good habit to get into just to familiarize yourself and come up with a game plan and a blueprint. It can become fully automated, but at the end of the day, having some sort of a manual process does help with uh, formulating some sort of plan or visualizing how you're going to trade for the week. If we were to take a look at this right here, this is it without the manual levels drawn in. So I'll just uh, switch between the two again. This is with the manual levels in which I have drawn in. And then this is what the chart looks like just from the quant trading app script. So you guys can see this purple level right here. It's already on the charts. This is just letting us know this is the highest absolute gamma strike for the Friday expiration. And I drew in this uh, orange strike here, called it AG. That's the absolute gamma strike, letting me know it's also the highest positive gamma strike, the highest open interest strike and highest call open interest. So that's what's making it the super strike right here. Price goes up, it rejects at the intraday zone, and then it retraces back and we close right within right within the iron condor range something i didn't mention in yesterday's video because i was trying to leave the quant trading app levels out of that video when i'm building my iron condors I will, I will also take into consideration what levels are plotted from the quant trading app script so if we come back here and we take a look at the iron condor we can see that I shorted the 47.82 call. So that was what was coinciding with roughly where the SPY should reject for the uh, day. By close, 100% of the credit was received. I did not hold all the way until the close. I was out, I believe, around $1.70 or so. So a little bit earlier in the session, $1.25 is when I closed most of them. And then I believe about $1.70 as that was well over the uh, profit target in which I was looking for as discussed in yesterday's video. So the Iron Condor, the zero DT for yesterday, Worked out really well. And then as we move right along, let's jump into the positions that I mentioned that I opened for today. So this was the one DTE yesterday, then we have the two DTE, and then we have the three DTE to get into. As you guys can see, this worked out pretty well here. There wasn't really anything for me to do. I'm still in this position. And that's what's creating this structure right here. If I were to uncheck, um, let's turn off anything not pertaining to today. So this is that one position. And you guys can see how it's going. If the market was to pull back a little bit and we end up pinning around here, then there's the opportunity to make over 700 bucks on this trade. And that's what you guys are seeing right here. The max profit is 910. That's obviously if we pin right around here and there isn't really much risk as I demonstrated or showcased to you guys yesterday. 4775 is the break even for this. 4755, let me just double check that. 4755, there we go. 
I have a slight uh, number dyslexia problem. So anyway, 4755, we see that's down here, and this is the weekly midpoint. So that's one of the reasons why I structured the trade. As I mentioned yesterday, I was not too concerned about the market closing below this level, just based on what we know for the gamma exposure levels. We also were over this 475 level. So just as I mentioned in the previous week's videos, if we are above a strike like this, then I'm not going to try to predict or you know project some sort of bearish bias saying, oh, the market's going to pull back. No, it has to get below these levels before I would consider that for as, as long as I'm concerned, as long as we're above these levels, then neutral to slightly bullish. And the perfect strategy for that is a broken wing butterfly because there is no risk to the upside. If we consolidate around here, then it ends up being a really nice win. And the only risk is to the downside. But for right now, I have no concern or there isn't really a worry. So these types of spreads create very high probability, high chances for profit situations. And this is the type of trading I like. It's not that stressful. It's swing trading. I don't really have to be micromanaging these positions. I set the alerts and I check in if something goes wrong. The other advantage to these types of positions are they are long theta. So it doesn't really matter how long the market wants to take to do whatever it wants to do, as long as it's not going in the wrong direction. In this case here, because it is a directional trade, but it is a neutral to directional because I don't need the market to keep going any higher. I just don't need it to go down too far. And that's why the broken wing butterfly is by far one of my favorite strategies I've been using. The calendar spreads used to be my favorites about two and a half, three years ago or so, but for the most part right now, it is all about these broken wing butterflies. This year has, the last two years has really been the years of butterflies for my trading. They have been my favorites. I understand why they are revered and loved amongst very experienced options traders because of the flexibility and the versatility is what makes them great. So I'm just showcasing. If you haven't seen anything like this before, I know when I first started trading out, there was certainly nothing like this in which I was aware about. Otherwise, I would have started trading this type of way much sooner. I used to be just like a lot of other traders trading momentum, looking for breakouts and scalping. I started off trading equity. So small, low flow penny stocks. I traded the uh, D gas, U gas back in the days, also traded the futures and then started trading options. But by the time I started trading options, I was taught by again, momentum based traders, momentum scalpers, and that didn't really resonate that well with my personality. So despite being able to trade that way, it never felt comfortable until I actually started trading spreads. And it was, isn't until I started trading spreads, started realizing how much easier trading can be because you have a little bit more control over your risk and you don't have to be so stressed for timing of things. And that's one of the big advantages to uh, trading this type of way, in my opinion. Everybody's personality is different, so you have to find what works for you. I'm just showcasing how using under $12,000 on a week like this, I did one analysis to the start of the week, how I'm already up over $1,500 for the week. And this is, again, a low volatile, very boring type of week in which I'm using very limited margin, so it's comfortable. And at the same time, this is a week where most traders might even decide to take off or go on vacation. It ends up being the type of situation that if I were on vacation and I were to decide to take these types of trades, I would be able to manage them from the go because I did my analysis at the start of the week. And I'm pretty sure a lot of traders out there, if you have a full-time job or you're doing a bunch of other things, especially around this season, it isn't bad to be able to pull in an extra $1,500, an extra $2,000 on a four-day trading week to end off the year. So as we move right along right now, the next position that was showcasing yesterday's video was this one right here. So this was the 2DTE Iron Butterfly, just targeting this area. Again, this area was targeting right here because it is pretty much the level that coincides with this strike here on the SPY. So as the SPY is here, I'm thinking it's going to be choppy around here. As long as it remains above here, then within this range is where I would expect it to be. You guys remember, this is what this little green rectangle was right here. This is where all the positive gamma is for this week. We're in a net positive gamma environment. We are above this super strike. Therefore, there isn't really anything to be afraid of. The VIX is also not increasing, so it doesn't really appear to be much fear in the market. And as I always like to tell myself, if the people with a lot of money, if the large institutions, if the huge hedge fund guys, if they're not worried and they're not scared, then why do I need to be scared? Being afraid as a trader, being long is a sign, I think, of being a newer trader or being just a retail trader or being someone that trades for ourselves because of the fear and the association we have with our own capital. We're always afraid to use it. So it's very easy to, to, to be afraid of price going down. But but if the VIX is not showing any real reasons for that, and again, having these clear levels on our charts can help ease a lot of the concern. Uh, the big counter to fear is usually education or knowledge. If you're knowledgeable about something, then it's less likely you're going to be afraid of it. We are afraid of things that we don't know, we don't understand. So having these levels on my chart, I know what this level is. It means above it, I don't need to be afraid. If we are below these levels, I get concerned. If we are below the negative gamma strikes and I see VIX increasing, then I'm going to be a little bit more concerned and I'm going to trade a lot 
differently. I definitely won't be recording a video in the middle of the day because at any given moment, something is more likely to happen that's going to be more sporadic. Price will be very sensitive to the changes in implied volatility, both up or down. So I need to be a little bit more focused. On top of that, if we move right along, if we jump back to this trade here and Iron Butterfly is just benefiting from time decay as the market is going nowhere right around the expectation, which I was thinking it would be. Again, I was starting the week thinking I might just close out most of the positions at the end of Wednesday and call it a just a two day trading week and then focus on some other work, focus on post production for some of the other films, as well as coding, as well as recording some other videos for you guys at the end of the week or so forth. I'm not sure entirely how I want to wrap up the week yet. All I know is just two more days left in the trading year and it's been a great year don't want to ruin it by doing anything stupid so intentionally keeping things very small and limited as we move right along now the next position that was uh, mentioned was the iron condor here for friday so this was the 3 dte trade i opened a position for every day of the week i did one set of analysis had a firm you know idea of what was likely to happen here we took a look at the economic calendar still early in the week anything can happen but that's why i'm probably thinking about starting to realize most of the gains here this will probably be the last video in which i will record for the week until i do the full weeks analysis at the end of the week just so you guys can see again how did price change trade around these gamma exposure levels because i'm not sure how many of you guys are actually doing it for yourself as i'm hoping you are starting to do now the purpose of me sharing these videos is not for you guys to copy exactly what i'm doing i'm just trying to showcase what i do how i apply the information and hopefully you guys do it for yourself because ultimately that's how you become profitable as a trader doing things for yourself and understanding what you're doing and finding what works for yourself that is how you have long-term consistency in the market as a trader as we jump back to the uh, iron condor here here's the friday expiration currently up let's just take a look at how this is doing so this is up about 15 percent of the max loss so the margin and that's exactly the ultimate profit target in which i would be looking for something like this so this will more than likely be closed out before the end of the day here so just after the bell rings because you can trade uh, spx options 15 minutes after the close i'll probably i'll, I'll most likely uh, look to close out this position just trying to squeeze out a little bit more if you guys remember i believe we're in three of those so let's just um uh let's turn off the zero dte this is for the tomorrow expiration and let me just uh reset this uh slice here there we go this is the current trading price tra trading slice let's just um take off the the uh, scenarios and now we're just looking at the current trading price of the spx the 240 bucks here for tomorrow and moving right along let's just look at the friday expiration so with three of those 450 bucks and as we take a look at this right here, so the three of them, let's just plop this up just so you guys that are probably seeing this for the first time will know, using about $3,200 in margin. And this is a great credit to margin ratio in terms of what was received. But as I mentioned again, I intentionally traded iron condors that were a little bit more narrow for this week because of the expectation of having low volatility because of the analysis i did of gamma exposure because of the levels from the quant trading app script i have some sort of security in knowing right up there is where we should uh in a sense meet some sort of resistance for the week based on the quant trading app script again those have been discussed in other videos just search you know you can check out the quant trading app youtube channel you can check out the website link is in the description full disclosure i am the lead developer so i'm going to be biased to these levels but I'm showcasing the information and the knowledge that I have as well as the tools that I use as we continue right along. Lastly, I did take one dumb trade here today, so I just wanted to mention that because lack of focus, got too comfortable, everything's working out, call it a little bit of you know slight boredom. I just wanted to participate in another trade because I had locked up so many of uh, positions on the SPX and I'm used to seeing, again, these larger numbers. And I was just like, hey, I just want to open up another trade. So I took one really stupid trade on the XSP. The XSP is the equivalent to the SPX, but it's just one tenth the size. So it's almost like trading the SPY, but instead of the trading the ETF, you can trade the index. And I open up a broken wing butterfly because I wanted to have a little bit more long delta positions in my portfolio for tomorrow. But I open it literally at resistance and then I close it at head support here. I had mentioned it in the Quant Trading App Discord and i was definitely bummed about it but it's just because we broke out the opening range so you know broke out the first 15 minute candle the original plan when i first when we, when we were here i had mentioned in the chat i said you know if we get over the uh previous day's high of day then i would be interested in you know taking that trade so i should have either waited like i originally planned wait for the break on the previous day high of day break targeting the 480 strike because 480 as we know on the spx 
is right up here. So we already know high gamma level right up at that level. We already have an idea. Here's the spy that is the high, second highest positive gamma strike and so forth. But the uh, the logic being either buy at the clear hold and break of a significant level or buy on support. So shortly after I essentially went long on this candle and then I closed because my stop loss was below the low of day. This is an instance where I would normally wait for the uh, close of the 15 minute candle before wherever I'm thinking to take the stop. But I didn't want to in this case because I knew I had already entered in at such a dumb position. My stop loss probably should have been right below VWAP. I shouldn't have waited before we came all the way down here just based on good day, day trading principles. But at the same time, I took a stupid stop. And not only did I stop right around the uh, right at the two day anchor VWAP, I also stopped right above this significant strike. So it didn't cost that much. It was about a dollar thirty something loss, if I remember correctly. I had four of them. So if I just were to show you guys, I used a little bit. Um, oops, I keep forgetting to link these back. I was using a little over a thousand dollars, and I was risking about a dollar thirty, a dollar fifty or so. I took the stop at around a dollar thirty something, and as we can see now, the trade is, would be I would be up twenty six bucks. So if we obviously close around here tomorrow, that's where it would be very annoying because I would have taken a hundred and something dollar loss, and then the trade could have squeezed out an extra eight nine hundred dollars for the week, and with no upside risk again. So there's so many ways to structure your trades when you trade spreads, and this is just amazing to be able to to utilize this, not using a lot of gas capital, not very stressed out, good risk to reward ratio. Again, risking a dollar fifty for the potential to make nine bucks. Even if the trade is closed out tomorrow morning, and let's just say we're around 480, it's a four hundred dollar trade. That's a four to one risk reward ratio. And theta is not of a concern because it is long theta. So in other words, if the market just continues to chop around this level, there's still the opportunity to make some sort of money. If you guys are curious, this is what I'm referring to here in the chat, the Quantity Amp Discord. So this is a simple enough for tomorrow to stop loss below low of day. Just sharing the idea, the concept for if anybody, you know, the risk isn't high and um, got filled, risking about a dollar twenty four or so using one K, blah, blah, blah. Continue right along. Just making jokes every time, you know, I wanted to get long, a little bit more aggressive. This ended up printing. I saw that tech is the weakest sector of the day at that time. I don't really like being very long whenever I see that. So that kept me a little bit out of trouble instead of larging, getting a larger size or trading something like the SPX. I was in a smaller position. I didn't add any more. So I kept it pretty small. But then as um, where's the joke? Let's see. I ended up rejecting there are other tools within quant trading app. It was the highest call volume. So I saw that. And at the same time, it was pretty dumb. So stopped out, blah, blah, blah. I hate stopping out the two-day anchor view up, but I should have either waited for the break of yesterday's high or bought the two-day anchor view up. So a dumb entry deserves a dumb stop loss. And that's something that I like to, uh, in a sense, I guess you can say discipline or punish myself with. Because my entry was stupid, I'm going to take the stop loss here. I'm not going to wait for the close here as I normally would if I had a good entry. All right, the market seems to be putting in some sort of move here. So I will definitely look to start closing out some of these positions. I probably would have closed them out if I was not recording this video here. All right, now I think I'm just rambling. I'm gonna go focus here and uh, hopefully this video helps. Hopefully you guys are enjoying these uh, live types of videos as I'm showing you guys my uh, live risk profile on this margin account. Thanks for watching guys and I'll catch you in the next one.